Hi everyone, and welcome to God's Plan, Your Part, a podcast where our goal is to read the entire Bible in a year, seeking to understand God's plan of redemption while discovering daily and practically your part in it. Welcome back. This is Jenny and Ryan on God's Plan, Your Part. Today we are looking only at two chapters. We're on Leviticus 22 and 23. 22 is taking us into some more spe- uh, like specific details of what offerings will look like. Um, what is expected of those acceptable offerings. And then we move into 23, talking about all of the different feasts or what we like to call holidays for the Jewish people. (laughs) So, Ryan. Uh, I think, I mean, I think both of us are kind of feeling like discussing more chapter 23 than chapter 22. Well, 22 is just a lot of details (laughs) again. Uh, One of the things to pull out of 22 is... Chapter 22 is basically just calling out how important it is that a sacrifice is without blemish mm-hmm. and like com- complete before the Lord. We kind of dealt with some of that tension yesterday talking about the requirements for the high priest. Um, that without blemish categorization is really important when it comes to Jesus. That is something yeah. that like points to Jesus. That is why it's important that Jesus was without sin. Like mm-hmm. Jesus was the spotless lamb that was slain to pay the pay the debt that we owe because of our sin. And so we will see over and over without blemish, without blemish, without blemish. And when we see that, it should just remind us that Jesus is our ultimate sacrifice without blemish. Mm-hmm. Um, so he was holy and pleasing before the Lord because he was the Lord. Mm-hmm. And so when he gives his life, he is an, an acceptable sacrifice. It's, that's why John the Baptist couldn't give his life for our sins. It's just one of the reasons, okay. right? Nobody can be a blameless sacrifice before the Lord except for Jesus. God provides that sacrifice, and now we have right relationship with God. So that is exciting. Um, it's just a, a quick thing you can pull out of Leviticus 22. Leviticus 23 is all about holidays, What's your favorite holiday? From Leviticus <laughs> or from our current holidays? Because I think I need some more time to think about it. Something I did appreciate when we were reading through, there are so many details about all of these different um, feasts and times of remembrance. But in our Bible specifically, it kind of just like breaks it down into a much easier digestible chunk. It says that Sabbath was a weekly remembrance of the significance of creation passover and the the feast of first fruits were um well actually in the feast of weeks were all done in the spring and the feast of trumpets day of atonement and feast of booths were all done in the fall so that was helpful for me to kind of wrap my mind around because like oh my goodness this is so many things to remember but it would basically be like us saying, well, we have Easter and spring, we have Christmas and like that kind of deal. Um, so that was helpful to me. You can you can read over this and you can be like, oh, wow, like look at all these weird ancient <laughs> customs. But I think every culture on earth probably has holidays. Hol- holidays is just a term for holy days. And so God is calling out what the holy days will be. Uh, with the first one being Sabbath on a kind of a weekly rotation. We've seen some of these things called out already, like the Feast of Unleavened Bread, uh, the the Passover, the Day of Atonement. Like we've seen these things already set out. The Day of Atonement was spelled out in Leviticus 16 and like a little bit further in 17. Uh, Passover and Unleavened Bread was called out in Exodus. And so a lot of these days are called out to make sure that the Israelites remember the things Mm -hmm. that God has done for them. Why do we have Memorial Day? I was just going to say, Memorial Day. There you go. Why do we have it? Just so that you can remember people that have served and served our country. It's it's kind of interesting because in the United States, we live in like this corporate government by the people kind of situation. And so our holidays have kind of moved away from God Mm -hmm. and now are part of like the civic experience. We still have Christmas. We still have Easter. But kind of the uniting holidays that people come together around can be... Uh, Veterans Day, Memorial mm-hmm. Day, the 4th mm-hmm. of July. They're not really holy days. They're days that celebrate the United States. And I know actually mm-hmm. not all of you are listening to the United States, but that is our experience here. There is something to this that's really interesting to me as like, what if we only celebrated these holidays that remind us who the Lord is and what the Lord wants his people to remember? Mm-hmm. One of the natural side effects would be we would remember much better. Uh, We're not Mm -hmm. saved by those days. We don't find salvation in celebrating Passover. 
But Passover can remind us of a lot of things that the Lord has done for us, for his people. So people get this mixed up all the time. (laughs) You can honor God and not celebrate Passover, right? Because we live a new life in Christ. Mm -hmm. We celebrate different customs and traditions in Christ. Are they valuable things? I think they are. I think I think we would better understand the story of what God is doing if we celebrated these holidays. Well, something, too, that we are doing a lot more even in our home church and just as followers of Jesus, something that's so important is sharing your story and sharing what God has done as a result of, like, what has played out in your life. Um, our church specifically, we've been looking at, like, the history of our church and how people with incredible faith stepped out and did crazy things to get our church where it is today. But just remembering back to those instances of how God worked is also like, I think just our present day way of remembering like God's power is just like remembering these moments and sharing these stories so that it's not something that's just forgotten or passed over. So real quickly, these are the things that are going to get spelled out. Sabbath is what you're going to celebrate every week to remember the rest that God commanded on creation. Like when he created, he commanded us to have holy rest. Um, That is not just taking a nap. That is not just sitting on the couch all day. That is actually doing spiritually restful things that rejuvenate your relationship with the Lord. Um, Passover is remembering when the, the spirit of the Lord passed over the people of Israel, um, on the night of the 10th plague in Egypt. Uh, the first fruits offering is going to be kind of this, um, giving back to the Lord of the harvest. Uh, and that's where a lot of our ideas of, uh, tithing or giving in church comes from these first fruits offerings, like giving to the Lord, the first and the best of what he's given to you. Um, the, the feast of weeks uh, what I what I have here, the note that I have here is that this is very similar to Pentecost. So what what's happening at Pentecost when the Holy Spirit's coming down on the people, that was during the Feast of Weeks. Um, we have a Feast of Trumpets where you're supposed to come together and basically like be uh, prepared before the Lord for a spiritual assembly. It's just kind of calling out the power of God and remembering to rest in Him. Uh, the Day of Atonement is actually like providing forgiveness and redemption for all the people. So the Day of Atonement for us ultimately is accomplished in Jesus. Uh, but the Day of Atonement for them was part of this yearly rhythm of forgiving the sins of all of Israel. Um, sacrificing a goat <laughs> and, and sacrificing a, a scapegoat. Yeah, we just read that not too long ago. And the Feast of Booths, uh, <laughs> it would be less confusing if you called it Tents. So yeah, that is really confusing. It's not like a, I don't know, it's not like a, a phone booth or something. It's not a booth at a diner. <laughs> this is when God is having the people live in tents outside their houses, which is interesting because they're getting this commandment when they already are living in tents in the wilderness. So it's looking ahead. Um, but it's reminding the people of when they had to live in tents when they were wandering in the wilderness. And God wants them to remember how they were delivered from those things. So this is just like the rhythm of holidays in the, the time of the Israelites, what God wants them to do so that they ultimately remember him. Everything's for God's glory. And so all these holidays provide rest, they provide rhythm, uh, and they provide ultimately a way to glorify God. So I think your part today kind of goes back to what we were talking about with these, these specific holidays, where our salvation, like you were saying, Ryan, is not wrapped up in whether or not we are recognizing these specific holidays anymore. What I think is important um, that goes along with these different feasts and days of remembrance was just thinking back to what God accomplished, making sure to set aside time to reflect and share with other people, just like they were doing in these specific, um, holidays of reflecting on what God had done. Do that with your own, um, your own family, your own friends, with what God has done in your own life. Uh, we all have different stories of how the Lord has saved us and and brought us out of really crazy bad situations or um, just brought us out of our sin. So I would encourage you to not be afraid, but to just step out in boldness and share your own stories so that the way that God has worked in your life is not something that is just forgotten and uh, set aside, but something that is uh, remembered and shared with future generations. All right, guys, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. 
Hey, thanks so much for listening to our take on God's word. Stick around and listen to the word uh, on the second part of the podcast. Before we get in there, uh, we just want to remind you, you can connect with us at any time on social media and YouTube at God's Plan Your Part. Also, we are a listener supported podcast. So if you ever want to help us out with the ministry that we're doing, uh, you can do that by clicking the link in our description. And now here's the reading for today. Leviticus 22. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons, so that they abstain from the holy things of the people of Israel, which they dedicate to me, so that they do not profane my holy name. I am the Lord. Say to them, If any one of all your offspring throughout your generations approaches the holy things that the people of Israel dedicate to the Lord, while he has an uncleanness, that person shall be cut off from my presence. I am the Lord. None of the offspring of Aaron, who has a leprous disease or a discharge, may eat of the holy things until he is clean. Whoever touches anything that is unclean through the contact with the dead or with a man who has had an emission of semen, and whoever touches a swarming thing by which he may be made unclean or a person from whom he may take uncleanness, whatever his uncleanness may be, The person who touches such a thing shall be unclean until the evening, and shall not eat of the holy things, unless he has bathed his body in water. When the sun goes down, he shall be clean, and afterward he may eat of the holy things, because they are his food. He shall not eat what dies of itself or is torn by beasts, and so make himself unclean by it. I am the Lord. They shall therefore keep my charge, lest they bear sin for it, and die thereby when they profane it. I am the Lord who sanctifies them. A lay person shall not eat of a holy thing. No foreign guest of the priest or hired worker shall eat of a holy thing. But if a priest buys a slave as his property for money, the slave may eat of it, and anyone born in his house may eat of his food. If a priest's daughter marries a layman, she shall not eat of the contribution of the holy things. But if a priest's daughter is widowed or divorced and has no child and returns to her father's house as in her youth, she may eat of her father's food, yet no lay person shall eat of it. And if anyone eats of a holy thing unintentionally, he shall add a fifth of its value to it and give the holy thing to the priest. They shall not profane the holy things of the people of Israel, which they contribute to the Lord, and so curse them to bear iniquity and guilt by eating their holy things, For I am the Lord who sanctifies them. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons, and all the people of Israel, and say to them, When any one of the house of Israel or of the sojourners in Israel presents a burnt offering as his offering for any of their vows or freewill offerings that they offer to the Lord, if it is to be accepted for you, it shall be a male without blemish of the bulls or of the sheep or the goats. You shall not offer anything that has a blemish, for it will not be acceptable for you. And when anyone offers a sacrifice of peace offerings to the Lord to fulfill a vow or as a free will offering from the herd of the flock, to be accepted it must be perfect. There shall be no blemish on it. Animals blind or disabled or mutilated or having a discharge or an itch or scabs, you shall not offer to the Lord or give to the Lord as a food offering on the altar. You may present a bull or a lamb that has a part too long or too short for a free will offering, but for a vow offering, it cannot be accepted. Any animal that has its testicles bruised or crushed or torn or cut, you shall not offer to the Lord. You shall not do it within your land. Neither shall you offer as the bread of your God any such animals gotten from a foreigner. Since there is a blemish in them because of their mutilation, They will not be accepted for you. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, When an ox or sheep or goat is born, it shall remain seven days with its mother, and from the eighth day it shall be acceptable as a food offering to the Lord. But you shall not kill an ox or a sheep or her young in one day. And when you sacrifice a sacrifice of thanksgiving to the Lord, you shall sacrifice it so that you may be accepted. It shall be eaten on the same day. You shall leave none of it until morning. I am the Lord. So you shall keep my commandments and do them. I am the Lord. And you shall not profane my holy name, that I may be sanctified among the people of Israel. I am the Lord who sanctifies you, who brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. 
I am the Lord. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the people of Israel and say to them, These are the appointed feasts of the Lord that you shall proclaim as holy convocations. They are my appointed feasts. Six days shall work be done, but on the seventh day is a Sabbath of solemn rest, a holy convocation. You shall do no work. It is a Sabbath to the Lord in your dwelling places. These are the appointed feasts of the Lord, the holy convocations, which you shall proclaim at the time appointed for them. In the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month at twilight, is the Lord's Passover. And on the fifteenth day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread to the Lord. For seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. On the first day you shall have a holy convocation. You shall not do any ordinary work, but you shall present a food offering to the Lord for seven days. On the seventh day is a holy convocation. You shall not do any ordinary work. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the people of Israel and say to them, when you come into the land that I give you and reap its harvest, you shall bring the sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest to the priest, and he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord so that it may be accepted. On the day after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it, and on the day when you are waving the sheaf, you shall offer a male lamb, a year old without blemish, as a burnt offering to the Lord. And the grain offering with it shall be two tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil, a food offering to the Lord with a pleasing aroma. And the drink offering with it shall be wine, a fourth of a hin. And you shall eat neither bread nor grain, parched or fresh, until the same day, until you have brought the offering to your God. It is a statute forever throughout the generations in all your dwellings. You shall count seven full weeks from the day after the Sabbath, from the day that you brought the sheaf of the wave offering. You shall count fifty days to the day after the seventh Sabbath. Then you shall present a grain offering of new grain to the Lord. You shall bring from your dwelling places two loaves of bread to be waved, made of two tenths of an ephah. They shall be fine flour, and they shall be baked with leaven, as first fruits to the Lord. And you shall present with the bread seven lambs a year, old without blemish, and one bull from the herd and two rams. They shall be a burnt offering to the Lord, with their grain offering and their drink offerings, a food offering with a pleasing aroma to the Lord. And you shall offer one male goat for a sin offering, and two male lambs a year old as a sacrifice of peace offerings. And the priest shall wave them with the bread of the first fruits as a wave offering before the Lord with two lambs. They shall be holy to the Lord for the priest. And you shall make a proclamation on the same day. You shall hold a holy convocation. You shall not do any ordinary work. It is a statute forever in all your dwelling places throughout your generations. And when you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not reap your field right up to its edge, nor shall you gather the gleanings after you harvest. You shall leave them for the poor and for the sojourner. I am the Lord your God. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the people of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall observe a day of solemn rest, a memorial proclaimed with blasts of trumpets, a holy convocation. You shall not do any ordinary work, and you shall present a food offering to the Lord. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, now on the tenth day of the seven month is the day of atonement. It shall be for you as a time of holy convocation. And you shall afflict yourselves and present a food offering to the Lord. And you shall not do any work on that very day. For it is a day of atonement to make atonement for you before the Lord your God. For whoever is not afflicted on that very day shall be cut off from his people. And whoever does any work on that day, that person I will destroy from among his people. You shall not do any work. It's a statute forever throughout your generations in all your dwelling places. It shall be to you a Sabbath of solemn rest, and you shall afflict yourselves. On the ninth day of the month, beginning at evening, from evening to evening, shall you keep your Sabbath. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the people of Israel, saying, On the fifteenth day of the seven month, and for seven days, is the feast of booths to the Lord. On the first day shall be a holy convocation. You shall not do any ordinary work. For seven days you shall present food offerings to the Lord. On the eighth day you shall hold a holy convocation and present a food offering to the Lord. It's a solemn assembly. You shall not do any work. These are the appointed feasts of the Lord, which you shall proclaim as times of holy convocation for presenting to the Lord food offerings, burnt offerings, and grain offer offerings, sacrifices and drink offerings, each on its proper day. Besides the Lord's Sabbaths, and besides your gifts, and besides your vow offerings, and besides all your free will offerings which you give to the Lord. On the fifteenth day of the seven month, when you have gathered in the presence of the land, you shall celebrate the feast of the Lord seven days. 
On the first day shall be a solemn rest, and on the eighth day shall be a solemn rest. And you shall take on the first day of the fruit of the splendid trees, branches of palm trees, boughs of leafy trees, and willows of the brook. And you shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. You shall celebrate it as a feast of the Lord for seven days in the year. It is a statute forever throughout your generations. You shall celebrate it in the seventh month, and you shall dwell in booths for seven days. All native Israelites shall dwell in booths, that your generations may know that I made the people of Israel dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Thus Moses declared to the people of Israel the appointed feasts of the Lord. Thanks so much for listening to God's Plan, Your Part. If anything stuck out to you, if you have any questions, or if you'd like to receive a Bible, you can email us at godsplanyourpart at gmail.com. Also, if you're enjoying the podcast, please consider supporting us through the link in our description. We love that you're on this journey with us, and we hope you have a great day. See you tomorrow.